been faithful to you and your family. I want you to lift up your own praise altar even this time. The promises of God are yea and amen. He has been faithful to you. Some of us, God has granted us journey mercy. Some of us, God has healed us. Some of us, God has given us that job. Some of us, he has given us a permanent residence. He has done great and mighty things. Words are not enough to show your gratitude. I want you to raise up your own praise altar even this time. To thank the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the lover of your life, the God that has been too faithful to fail you. I want you to appreciate him. Lord, this morning we come, oh Lord, as families. We come as individuals to declare your faithfulness in the midst of trials, in the midst of storms. You approve yourself to be faithful. Lord, we say we thank you. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 to 3, say, And the Lord was with Joseph. I do not know the storms you've gone through. I do not know the situations that seem overwhelming. But I want you to know that with God, you will rise above the storm. You will go over that situation. You will come out triumphant in the name of Jesus. That pit of prison will be your stepping stone to your throne in the name of Jesus. I want you to start thanking him that, Lord, I know you are with me. Whatever I'm going through, is it with that child? Is it with that immigration issue? Is it with that job? Is it with that health situation? Whatever it is, name it. I know you are with me in this storm. I know I will come out as gold. 
it is a trying period, but God is with me in every season. I know I will come out triumphant over that situation. Is someone praying that your declaration is your manifestation? I want you to pray. I know with you, with you, you my father, I will overcome. try us. Situations will come our way. But at the end of the story, we are overcomers. And so, Father, that's our declaration. You've made us to be overcomers. We are winners. We are victors. It doesn't matter the storms we've gone through. Father, we will be still because we know you are God. We will be still because we know you are with us. Father, Lord, I pray that when discouragement comes, when situations batter us here and there, let our focus be on you. Let our focus be on you. The grace of stand still and see the salvation of the Lord we receive from you in the name. Today we want to look at the seasons of life. The seasons of life. You see, life has seasons. Just as we have the natural season in the winter, we have the summer, we have the spring, we have the fall. Life also has its seasons. And um, because we know life has its seasons, we have to take some steps so that we do not miss our seasons. We do not misuse our seasons. When you are young, you have the energy. It's more like the prime time for people that... The young age is when you have the energy to do a lot of things. At the time you are getting older, you are restrict, restricted. The energy might not be there. The time might not be there. You know, commitments will be here and there. And you discover you do not have all the free time again to do what you want to do. So that's why Ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 1 says, We should serve the Lord when we are young. Take that opportunity when you are young to serve the Lord. You know, one of our daughters once said, he said, I want to advise the young ones. It is now you should start reading the Bible. It is now you should be praying more. It is now you should be doing a lot of things because when responsibility comes, the children are dragging you here and there. When so many things, you don't even have time for your own self. So whatever you do not store in your in your, in, your, in your life now, becomes difficult. Becomes difficult. So this is a time, especially for the young ones, to invest, this season of your life, to invest in knowing God. Invest in serving God. Invest in doing the right thing. And that was the story of Joseph. I want you to know that uh, in the seasons of life, no two people have the same season. Twin, even twins don't have the same season. When we say seasons of life, I'm not talking of just the biological season of, uh, you know, from baby to toddler to this and all. We are talking of situations that come in life with people. You discover that when someone is going through their own winter season, winter season is characterized by dormancy. Things are either dead or dormant, waiting for the next season. And the season of life of winter can be described as a season where it seems as if things are not working for you. Winter season is a time as if you are lonely. People go through, you know, frustrations, joblessness, divorce, or loneliness, sickness, and everything. You are left alone. But the good thing about the winter period it's a time of sober reflection. A time when you, you sit back and look at your life. Where did I go wrong? Or what happened? The dreams God gave to me, the visions God gave to me, what happened to them? Did I take a wrong step? 
Did I allow the wrong people into my life? Did I do some one or two things that were not, you know, godly? And it's a time for you to sharpen your sword, to go back to the drawing board. The winter period is not a time of activities. It's a time of more of sober reflection. And look at your life so that when the spring come back again, after winter, we have spring. You will know what to do. You will correct yourself. You will pray because that winter period is also the time of intimacy. Yes, I'm going through the situation, but I know I have my faith in God. I will be still and know God is with me. Praise the Lord. So winter period is a time that seems as if nothing is happening, but you depend on God. Even in marriage, we have through what you call the winter period also, where it seems as if nothing is happening. Maybe a, a spouse left or they lost their life. It can be more like a, a, a storming period for them. And but you know you have God with you. That is the most important thing when you go through the season of winter. During the spring season, the spring season is a period. You see, my first experience in winter, uh, my first trip to Vienna, Austria, 1990, 1998, Vienna, Austria. So it was in February, and I went for a program for three to four months. So when I got to the country, the old place, the trees were without leaves. It seems as if they were dead. And I was just saying, oh my God, all these trees in this country, they are dead. Because that's my first time of, I've gone to London, England, I've gone to other countries, but I've never gone to a very cold country. And I was just saying, oh, all these trees are dead, you know, that type of thing. But lo and behold, before I, I came back to Nigeria, at about the month of uh, April, May, it has started bringing forth, you know, spring. It has started bringing forth leaves and everything. You see, you can't judge your life based on one season. That's the truth. You might be going through your winter period and everybody's judging you. This No, I am just passing through the season. You can't judge your life. You can't judge a plant. You can't judge your family based on one season. You will all pass through different seasons. Are you getting it? Because the springtime will come. And you will never know you went through that summer, uh, winter period. You will be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that did not smell the smoke of the furnace. That's my prophecy to someone here today in the name of Jesus. You might be going through a difficult period. I've come to encourage you. Nobody has the right to judge you because you are going through a season. Because our times are in the hands of God. Praise the Lord. We all go through seasons. We all go through seasons. I want us to look at uh, the book of uh, Genesis. Chapter 37, if the multimedia is with me. So, you can't judge an individual based on one season. Just be patient with them and don't judge the God you are serving based on one season. Yeah, don't judge your God to say, ah, this God I'm serving, why is it like this? Because God will pull you through that season and you come out as gold in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know that every season is temporary. No season is permanent. After the winter comes the spring. After the spring comes the summer. After the summer comes what? The fall. So you see, it's a circle we all go through. But what you do, very important. What you do during that season in your life is very, very important. Are you wasting what you are going through. Because everything you go through is for a purpose. Life is for a purpose. And the purpose of life is for you to know what you should be doing at that time. If I'm going through a thin period, a lean period, 
just like the, 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 uh, the dream of Pharaoh. And I'm, first I go through the fat period, then the limb period, I'll go through the limb period before the fat period. What are the lessons I should be learning? During the time of abundance, during the time of youthfulness, during the time you are the energy, we are you investing on things. We are you saving. Because it is only when you invest or save things that when the bad period comes, people will not even know you are going through the bad period because you have reserve in you. You have reserve. It can even be in relationships. The time you add the energy, the time you add all the uh, connection, we are you building good and godly relationships. Whether with Christians or non-Christians, or you are toxic in everywhere you go. The way you build relationships will determine when you are old, when you cannot go anywhere, whether anybody will look for you. So what are you doing in that season? The season you are the plenty. Yeah, you've been hospitable. Oh, it was only me, myself, my dog, my everything. Selfish. You've been blessed to be a blessing. That's the truth about it. In life, whatever we have, we've been blessed to be a blessing. And when you bless, then when you go through that period, God will know that when you add it, you were not tight with your hand. You were Libra. A Libra soul will be made fat. Praise the Lord. So when you go through those seasons, I want you to know it's not a permanent bus stop. It's a pause. It's a period you are going through because God is trying to do something in you your life. Be it in marriage. Maybe the storming period and we are screaming on each other and I want to divert a little bit and I want to speak to parents here. Sometimes you think your babies don't know what you are doing. It has been discovered that as early as age two whatever you do around a baby registers in their brain. If you turn your house to a boxing tournament, the children are seeing it. If you turn it to a toxic environment, the children are seeing it. What are you building in the life of your children? The time you are going through that storm, are you so selfish that you are not considering the little ones you are bringing up? That you are showing them bad examples. And they think it is okay to fight. They think it is okay to quarrel. They think it is okay to be toxic. They think it is okay to be nasty to people. You've just been a caretaker of these children. It doesn't matter the seasons you go through. You must learn to comport yourself. You must learn to be a good example as a believer. You must learn to be a good example to people around. Not to be a negative example to anyone around you. Are you getting it? That is what is destroying many children. Some children say, I, I don't want to get married. I say, we say, why? Why, why? I'm not seeing a good example around me. Because the parents have become cat and dog, even in the front of the children. What are you building? You're just going through a season. It can take two to twelve years. The stormy season can take two to twelve years. Depending on you dying to yourself and deciding to forgive. Because we have to, we have to forgive. We have to let go. We have to learn to communicate. So please, during your stormy season, pray about it that God will shorten. Because every season, we go through it. Every season can be lengthened or can be shortened, depending on what you do. Every 
season can be lengthened or shortened depending on what you do. Praise the Lord. So, so how do we shorten? I want to digress into before I go to the story of Joseph. Do I have the multimedia there with the scripture, please? Or nothing is happening. So, uh, when I'm going through a season, let's say the season of joblessness, or I'm going through an odd situation, I'm going through a season that is not palatable. Praise the Lord. So when I'm going through that season, what happens? If I want to shorten that season, what do I do? I cry to God in prayer. Call upon me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Do you know blind Bartimaeus? Ah, that man. When it was a case where he was always depending upon people. He was depending upon people in his life. Every day they would carry him to that spot. And he was depending upon people. He thought to himself that this journey of blindness should end. This season of blindness, I am tired of it. And when he heard some seasons change, because you hear there's a job somewhere. And by God's grace, you applied for that job. You got it because you heard. So that season of joblessness becomes shortened because you got an information and you acted upon it. He heard that Jesus was passing by and blind Bartimaeus started screaming, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. In Mark chapter 10, Verse 46 to 52. He was screaming. And people said, shut up your mouth. He refused. You know, in those days, even in this country, if you go to emergency, and in my country before, the person that is screaming more is who they we attend to. Am I lying? The person, mm, 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 they will leave you. <laughs> If you are screaming and disturbing them, you become a nuisance to them. <laughs> it will shorten your stay. It's true. It will shorten your stay. Uh, because they don't want the trouble. You are screaming. They will call. Even if the thing is not as bad, they will attend to you. So if you want to shorten that period, you are going through. Whether joblessness, whether singleness, whatever it is, cry to God. Oh Lord, I will not let you go. This season must pass. This situation must change for my good. Lord, I am tired of this situation. And God will answer. Praise the Lord. Am I communicating? So if you want to shorten your season, Anna did it. She was going to Shiloh and she persevered. So perseverance is another thing. Because some of us, when we've prayed after some time, I don't think God will answer. It will be the time you did not pray that God could have answered. Remember, Anna has been going to Shiloh for all these years. But there came a season that God himself appointed time. And God answered our prayers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if I were you, I will not shut my mouth. I will not start, uh, uh, just say it will not come to pass. Even Daniel. I had to pray for 21 days when he realized that it was time for Jerusalem to be free. Even when there was a prince of Pasha that held the prayer, he persevered till that prayer was answered. Praise the Lord. Another thing you do to shorten your season is to praise God. Let the people praise me. Let the people praise me. And the heart will yield an increase. It didn't say at his season. That means if I praise God, 
God will force the heart to yield its increase for me. My season of scarcity will be shortened because I praise God. Are you getting it? So we must learn to praise God in whatever season we are going through. Are you thanking him for this? You said, Lord, I, know, I don't know the reason. No. Maybe you are trying to refine me. Because we come to the story of Joseph. It took 13 good years from the vision, the dream God gave to him for it to be manifested. 13 good years. But during that time, he went through his own seasons. Another way you can shorten your season, be it of loneliness, be it of, of, of joblessness, be it of widowhood, whatever it is you are shortening, is humility. God resists the proud. The more you are proud, you will stay in that season. I mean, to see some people. Oh, there's something, uh, they make mouths up and down. They lose out. Those people who go, they will get it. God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. Is the God that lifts people up and brings others down? Is the God that raises one up and brings people down? So the more you are humbling yourself to say, Lord, I'm depending upon you. God will shorten that season. He will lift you up. And that was the case of Joseph. That was the case of Daniel. That was the case of Esther. Seasons can also be shortened when we have what you call a path of destiny in our lives. They are more like mentors. They are connectors. They are prayer partners. They are people who will pray along with you. Let me tell you, Peter, in Acts chapter 12, could have remained long in that prison and maybe died if people did not stand. A pass of destiny as prayer warriors in the church prayed for Peter and Peter was released. Praise the Lord. So when you have a pass of destiny interceding for you, God himself will have mercy. When one chases a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. And he said, when two of us agree over something, so you need to agree with someone, an epa of destiny. Matthew chapter 18 from 18 to 20 there. He said, when we agree, it shall be established in heaven. So when you want that season to, to, be, to be shortened, connect with an epa of destiny, be a prayer partner, be someone else to do. Also, diligence. If you are diligent in what you are doing now, God will lift you up to another level. See at a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before, that means level changes. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. That means your level from mean men club is changed to what? King's club. That is it, elevation. You must be able to be diligent in whatever God has called you to do. Faith in God. Along the line, when the season is so elongated, you might be discouraged. But Phil Crawford, call forth those things. Believe God. Have faith. He said, when you have faith as a mustard seed, you can tell mountains to move. In Mark chapter 11 from verse 22 to 24 there, he said, whatever you, 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 you say, when you believe, it will be unto you. So we must believe God. I want you to say, I will believe God. I will believe God. You see, in John chapter 3 verse 10, the situations you can show, give me John chapter 3 verse 10 before we go. The situations might be, you know, stormy and seems as if things are not going forward. But the Bible said, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. That's the song. Give thanks. We are grateful. Give thanks. To He, three times because he's given 
Jesus Christ is Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks with the only one. Give thanks because is given. Jesus Christ is Son. And now let we say, I am strong. Let a poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give time. In Joel 3, 10, it says, Beat your plums shares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. You will have the last word over the enemy in the name of Jesus. Another thing to do to lengthen the period is when you fear God. You see some people want to manipulate things and manipulate people. To making things happen in their own season. No. If yourself I slept with Potiphar's wife. He could have only been a glorified servant continuously enjoying Madame in that house. Yes. But he said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He feared God. Many people are elongating their seasons because they are manipulating. Everything they do, lies, 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 lies. You know yourself. Oh, yes. We can pray for you. God by mercy can answer you. Mm. But many people, you know, everything you do, guru, guru, don't fear God. People don't fear God. When pastor is not there, or people are not there, what people do, they are serial liars and manipulators. Then when you start having problem, they say, right from beginning, you, your motives was manipulation. Oh, yes. In that job, in that career path, in that relationship, in that home, everything about you, manipulations. God, we have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. If you fear God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear God. Because God looks at your motives in everything you do. You can manipulate everybody, but you can't manipulate God. And let me tell you, anything of manipulation is a seed you are sowing. That will bring an harvest. At its own right time, it will bring its harvest. It doesn't matter how you cover it. It will bring its harvest. Praise the Lord. And I want you to know that during that time, don't be anxious. Do not panic. Philippians chapter 4, you know, from verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing. At the time you are panicking because you are going through the season of maybe some health situations and some financial situations or some um, career situations or some singleness or whatever it is, as you are panicking, anxiety can make you to have mental health issues. You can flip and cause more problems to yourself and your family. There's a thin line though. Once you flip, you don't even know what you are doing again. That's true. 
Don't panic. In Psalms 46 verse 10, it says, be still. Let's look at it. No God is in control. I want you to tell your brother or sister that God is in control. Ah, God is in control. He has not left us. God is in control. So don't allow the enemy to just come and mesmerize you. God is in control of your life. Do you understand? He's in total control. It doesn't matter when you... you, you, you the Bible says in Isaiah 43. Let's look at it. Isaiah 43. It said, when you pass, walk through the fire. So when I was reading, I said, why will I walk through the fire? Is it normal to walk through the fire? What do you want to do when you are going through the fire? You're wrong. He said, when you walk through the fire... I will be with you. Go to verse 2 then. That means God will make the fire to become air conditioner because it's with you. Are you getting it? When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, I will, it will not sweep you. Then when you walk, can you see when it is fire? I say, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Can we go to King James Version? I don't know the version you are using there. I try to understand. So I want you to know that that flood of problem will not swallow you up. Amen. That fire will not burn you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because God is with you. Amen. Weeping is only permitted for a night, Psalm 30. But there's a joy in the morning. Are you getting it? You are getting it. Praise the Lord. So in that season when you are going through, I want you to know that it is time you choose listen more to God than what is happening around. Let your focus be on God. Seek wise counsel where you need counseling from the right source. Because information is important. It will save you a hell of problem. You don't need to go to experiences, your teacher. Learn from people's experience before you go through the school of experience. Praise the Lord. Some will come naturally, but what I can avoid, why must I should avoid it? Now we are going to look at when Joseph went through his seasons. What did he do? It starts with. Genesis chapter 37. I'm going to paraphrase a lot of things. It starts with Genesis chapter 37. From verse 2 there. That Joseph. Father loved Joseph. Do you know that anytime you are loved by anyone. You, though you are having seasons of happiness. That because people like you they approve you. But for every new level they are new devils. Oh, yes. For every new level God gives you, there are new devils wanting to attack you. So because of Joseph's, uh, uh, Jacob's love of jo uh, Joseph, what happened, he, the brothers did not like him because the father loves him. And the father made it worse, he had to go and sow. <laughs> <laughs> cut off many colors and gave to Joseph. So we can see that partiality was in the family. And we parents sometimes we cause the problem. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we saw in that place that Joseph's brother, some of them were doing the wrong thing and Joseph did not shut his mouth. So he was that type of apropos manager too now. You know, daddy loves me, so I can always go and tell daddy, eh, they did this, they did this, they did this. So that was what Joseph was doing. And he had a dream. And when he had a dream, I said, can we go now to verse 5 to 10 there? If you are with me, please. Present. Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brother, they hated him the more. Remember, they hated him because the father loves him. Now he's pouring petrol into fire. He told them, ah, they said, you mean 
you are going to be above us. And he had another dream. And he told his brothers. So in summary, his dream, his assignment put him in trouble. Do you know his dream was his assignment? God was showing him who he was going to be. That's why we must learn to close our mouths. You don't just say everything because you do not know. Your greatest enemy are people in your own house your own house. And we fast forward. The brother sold him. The father sent him. When the father knew the brothers hated him, why will he send this boy alone to go and meet the brothers? And Joseph, being a good boy, did not refuse the father's errand. If the student of another, didn't you see how they were cursing me? I won't go. They will tell you, they won't go. Children of nowadays, they will tell you, they won't go. But Joseph obeyed the father and went. And the summary of it is that he was sold into slavery. Now we're going to pick it from there. When he was sold into slavery, there were some things that happened. While in Potiphar's house, Joseph was able to show a servant attitude and a leadership attitude. In Potiphar's house, God was with him. In Genesis chapter 39, and the word of God says that because Potiphar saw how God blessed Joseph, because he was very committed in whatever he was doing, God made Potiphar to make him head of the servant. Remember the dream he was going to head all of them. So he was in training in Potiphar's house. Oh yes. He was in training. So the season you are going through is a training season. I want you to tell yourself it's a training season. Yes, so. If some of us do not go through delaying having children, if some of us do not have children, I always say that it's one of my sons that made me to be a prayer warrior. He's still a prayer, p- prayer point in my life. I'm telling you because if situations do not come, some of the gift in you will not come up. I'm telling you. But when that situation is there, you will keep on praying till your joy is full. Yes. Sir. So whatever thing happens, Try to know, God, what are you teaching me in this season? So, Joseph was able to be a good leader. He was prudent. He worked with integrity. He was faithful. In all he did in Potiphar's house. But in spite of all those things that Joseph did, the enemy... Started maltreating him. So he went through maltreatment from his own siblings. Now another set of maltreatment from, another season of maltreatment from Potiphar's wife. Let me tell you, proning period is not an easy period. Do you know proning? I'm a gardener. When you are cutting the plants, it seems as if you are, you are just destroying the plant. But let me tell you, a week after, it will double in size. Whatever pruning period you are going through, I want to prophesy to someone. It will bring multiple blessings upon your life in the name of this. You will sit back to say, God, I never knew you loved me this way. The prison. Now in the prison, Joseph started using his gift. How many of us, when wrongly accused, will not be depressed in prison? We not want to talk to anybody. We just want to be alone, just be complaining. And he made the best of that season. He made the best of that season. He built relationship. Because if he did not build relationship, if people wake up and they are worried. What is my business if you are worried if your face is uh, sour and everything? What's my business? But because he built relationship, he knew something else was happening to these people. 
and said, what is your problem? So even in that prison, he decided to use his gifting. Some of us have not been able to excel, shorten the season in our life because we say, did God give me this before I will do this? Okay, I'll be waiting there. Oh, yes. God is waiting for you to do some things before he will do some things for you. That's the truth. He created you for good works. Praise the Lord. So why he was using his, 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 uh, his, uh, his gifting in the prison, he built a relationship and finally, it was because he built a relationship in the prison. Though the man forgot him for a while, the man remembered him. I pray for you, you will not bury your talents. I pray for you, you will not miss your season. In the name of Jesus. So, in summary, God himself lifted up Joseph. And when finally his brothers saw him, I want us to look at Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. When everything said and done, he said a word. And that is the same word I want to tell people. Yeah. What did Joseph say? Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. And we are going to look at Psalm 105 also. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me. When the enemy attacks you with so much problems, when the enemy puts so many things in you or your family, his intention is to harm you. But what is it? But God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Some of us, we go through situations so that God will prune us to make us better people. I always tell people, I've always been a strong person, but there was a year, I won't forget, the year 2000. From the beginning of that year to the end of that year, I was from one hospital to the other. I was eating, taking medication as if I was taking ekba, granot and, uh, you know, peanut butter or whatever, peanuts. After that situation, there is this art of compassion that rose in me that when people are sick, I empathize more with them. If I had not gone through that system, I said, huh? I'm not supposed to be strong. I would think everybody is like me. But that situation was an eye-opener in my life. That seasons come, that it doesn't matter how you think you're strong. The enemy seems to be having an upper hand. But at the end of it, I came out, you know, triumphantly. But it was a season of eye-opening for me. You go through that financial stress or that problem so that you will be an advisor to someone tomorrow when they are going through something. You go through that divorce because tomorrow God is going to make you to be, a, a, you know, a helper of destiny to someone. You went through that uh, uh, immigration issues with the lawyers, with the right people, so that God will make you to be a good connector to people looking for, you know, help in immigration issues. Every season you went through is supposed to be a learning ground for you to help others when you come out of it. I pray God himself will do something new in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, finally, we are going to read Psalm 105. Psalm 105. When Joseph went through his season, the word of God says something in Psalm 105 from verse 19, maybe from 17. Psalm 105 from verse 17. Not knowing that whatever Joseph went through was a testing It was an examination period from God. But the instruments used were his siblings. And he sent a man before them. Joseph sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. 
His neck was put in irons. Till what, for, for, till what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved, proved true. He's going through all that was because God wanted to prove that I've given you a vision. You will be the head over your brothers, but you will go through some situations. Is God's word going to be false? When God gave you that vision, being a medical doctor, when God gave you that vision, having the marriage, when God gave you that this and that, don't you think enemy will come and be testing you? Are you going to be focused on what God has told you to be true? Or you will be distracted by the situations in life. Most cases we are distracted. Especially summer period. When things seem to be good. We are distracted. And we drift away. But when situations come. Just say Lord go back to the dream. Lord this is your word for me. The word proved. The word came to pass. In fact the word of God will will be tried and we want to know whether that vision that dream, that promise God has given to you will come to pass I've gone through a lot as a pastor I will end now but God keeps reminding me two visions he gave to me that I will be on the pulpit let me tell you to lead is very difficult. If you think it is an easy work, it is not an easy work. Even your own family is to lead them. You know the problems you are having. How much more to lead different people? With different character, different people. Human beings are the most difficult to lead. But because I knew what God gave to me, God showed me. He has been my strength. He has been my shield. He has been my buckler. I want us to bear it. As we see, Joseph was able to succeed because he had a relationship with God. He had faith in God. You're going through seasons in life. Is who is with you in that boat? Who is with you in that journey? Are you going alone? A loner or you want someone to be with you? I want you to tell the Lord. Maybe you do not have a relationship with him. I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, just as you were with Joseph, the Bible kept on saying, and the Lord was with Joseph. Finally, he became the prime minister and the brethren bowed to him three good times. Lord, I pray you will have mercy. Anyone that is here that does not have a relationship with God, Joseph was able to triumph because he had a relationship with God. If you do not have a relationship with God, this is just the right time for you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I surrender all to you. I do not want to walk this journey alone. I want to depend upon you totally in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that, Lord, have mercy upon me. Whatever way I've been doing the wrong things, Father, Lord, forgive me in the name of Jesus. By your blood, wash me of every past. Give me a colorful future in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we are praying. The rest of us, I want us to stand up. We are going to pray this prayer in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 12. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 12 We are going to pray I do not know about you but I want my life to be fruitful I want God to do something new in my life And that of my family in the name of Jesus Zechariah chapter 8 verse 12 I want us to pray Zechariah chapter 8 verse 12 It says For the seed shall be prosperous The vine shall give a fruit The grace I give their due. I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all things. I want you to pray. Some of you have been sowing seeds in prayer. You have been sowing seed in giving. You have been sowing seed in hospitality. God looked at everything Joseph has done and brought Joseph out. I want you to pray, Father, according to your word, that Lord, let my seed be prosperous. You might
might say, what is a seed? Whether you have children or not, you are a seed yourself. You are the seed of Abraham. Father, let my seed be prosperous. Father, let my vine give out its fruit. My vine will not be barren. My vine will not be barren. Oh yes, let my vine give out a fruit. The ground shall give an increase for me. Oh yes, whatever season I'm going through, it will end. It will expire in the name of Jesus. I shall receive increase. Father, the heavens shall give a due over me. I will have un all, all, all round prosperity. Is someone praying there? Your declaration is your manifestation. You have sown seed in prayer. You have sown seed in, in giving. You have sown seed in commitment to God's work. This is your time that the dew of heaven will bring something new in your life. Oh yes, you will possess the good of this land. You will possess the good of this land. Your family will possess the good of this land. Now I want you to pray. Any agenda of the enemy concerning your life, Father, let it expire. Father, shorten my period of suffering. Father, by mercy, shorten my period of suffering. In the name of Jesus, bring me out of all, oh Lord, every dry situation. Bring me out of anything that is not of you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, that's our prayer. We know without you in this journey, we go nowhere. Lord, I pray just as you were with Joseph. And at the end of his season, he came out triumphant. We will come out triumphant. Ah, we will come out triumphant. And your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's uh, package our offering before we have the thanksgiving.